Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. I hope you're having a fantastic day. In this video, I'm going to reveal a lot of secrets you hopefully won't know about some of the stats and attributes in Elden Ring. There is one specific reason I wanted to create this video for you originally. One very overlooked stat that actually usually gets crapped on quite a lot by elitists. And hopefully when I share with you all that this has to offer, it will change a lot of people's perspectives quite dramatically. However, before I get ahead of myself, let me share some super interesting information that you may not know about some of the more minor secondary stats and attributes that Elden Ring has to offer. We'll start off with the most obvious, but I'll cover it just in case anyone doesn't know. And I am, of course, talking about discovery. On the surface, this is very self-explanatory. The higher your discovery is, the more chance you have of finding items, weapons, and other loot. It is great to increase this stat whilst you are farming for a specific crafting material, or more importantly, rare weapons and armor. If you didn't know, it is primarily determined by your arcane stat. So the more arcane you have, the more discovery you'll have. You can do things like equipping the silver scarab and using a silver pickled foul foot, all to drastically increase your arcane. And as I say, this is fantastic if you're trying to farm a specific weapon, as you see me doing here. There are two amazing weapons that drop from the Clean Rot Knights, both the Clean Rot Spear and the Halo Scythe. And literally only the second or third Clean Rot Knight I have come across has just dropped me the Clean Rot Spear. For this video, I did not do any farming off camera. This literally just dropped for me within a minute of farming. That is how good increasing your discovery stat is if you are trying to grind for something specific. Next up, let's have a look at resistances. Most people probably know what the resistances do. What I really wanted to call out for anyone who may not be familiar is why there are two different numbers next to all of your resistances. Firstly, let me quickly go down the list. Immunity is going to increase your resistance to poison and rot. Robustness increases your resistance to bleed and frost. Focus increases your resistance to sleep and madness. And vitality increases your resistance to death. As you can see, I'm wearing the full mushroom set here, and I also have a couple of talismans on to raise my immunity even higher, and this dungeon is an absolute breeze. As you can see, my poison bar is massive, and it would take so long for that to fill up. So I can wade through the poison, I can take my time, I can do a little dance. This is how crucial resistances can be in certain areas in this game. And as we take a look at my stats now that I've stopped being attacked, as you can see, it says my immunity is 640 out of 245. What does that even mean? Well, that's not at all what it means. The number on the left is your total immunity. The number on the right is how much of that is specifically coming from your armor set. So the mushroom set is giving me 245 and then all other sources such as my talismans and my levels themselves are boosting that total up to 640. That's exactly what that means. So really you only care about the big number. Now that you know that, let's take a look at the difference between defense and damage negation because it's not as straightforward as resistance. This gets even more confusing. Again, there are two different numbers. So as you can see here, let's just take straight up physical defense as an example. Wearing the mushroom set, I have 166 physical over 12.529. What does that mean? Well, that's not at all what it means. The number on the left is your defense, and this is not affected by your armor, just your level. The number on the right is your damage negation, and the only thing that affects this is your armor, not your level. So they're both two entirely separate numbers. And how they impact the damage you take is very different as well, but they do work together to calculate the final figure of how much damage you will take. So let me equip a much tankier armor set. Now we'll go back to this screen, and as you can see, I've now got 166 defense and 30.744 damage negation. And how this is calculated when enemies attack you is as follows. Say an enemy attacks you for 400 physical damage. That will immediately be reduced by 166, bringing the total down to 234. Of the remaining 234 damage that is now being dealt to you, 30.744% of that is also negated, meaning the enemy will deal around about 170 to 175 points of damage to you. That is exactly how defense and damage negation are calculated. So just very quickly again, it is enemy's damage minus your defense and then minus the damage negation percentage of your armor. Before we get into the next tip, let me thank the sponsors of this video, Manscaped.com. To explain how much I support this brand, let me show you something far more important than any marketing jargon. I literally already own this product. I've been using Manscaped for ages and it's honestly so good. Manscaped have kindly sent me their performance package 4.0, which is a men's all-in-one grooming kit from head to toe. So now I've got extras. Obviously, 
the most important part is the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. It's a waterproof and cordless trimmer that can be used anywhere on the body. And it has multiple blade attachments, so you can use one for your face and another for your Elden Beast. Being waterproof and cordless, you can use it in the shower. It has an LED spotlight to give you a precise shave every time. You can also engage the travel lock by tapping the button on the front three times and that will stop it from turning on when you don't want it to. Also included is the Crop Preserver for all day body odor protection in the darkest and dampest of regions and the Crop Reviver to refresh the area whenever you need. You'll also get the Cordless Rechargeable Weed Whacker 2.0 for your nose and ears. It has up to 45 minutes of runtime and is created to help reduce nicks, snags and cuts. For a limited time when you purchase the Performance Package 4.0 kit, you'll get two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. The these boxes are super comfortable and the travel bag is a luxury leather traveling case. So go to manscaped.com today using the link below and use code DOMS20 at checkout for 20% off plus free international shipping. Now let's get back to the video. And now for the final and most pedantic of all the secondary stats, poise. And then once we've looked at poise, we'll finally get onto the main attribute points and I'll share with you the main reason I wanted to make this video. There are lots and lots of specifics when it comes to poise points and I could spend ages talking about this, but I'm not gonna bore you. Let me just give you the few highlights. Firstly, do not worry about poise until you have an armor set and the equip load to wield it that gives you at least 45 points in dex. Anything below 45 is useless, it doesn't do anything. So if you're agonizing over an armor set giving you 35 or 40, just go for either whatever looks more stylish or whatever has the best damage negation because it does nothing below 45. At 45, you can endure one light hit from a dagger or a rapier. So even then, it's kind of pointless. 53 is the sweet spot. For most players, you want to aim for 53 poise. At this point, you can endure one attack from all one-handed standard hits. And that means you won't be staggered and knocked out of your animation. You can power through it and continue your attack. You will also be able to tank one two-handed dagger light hit. Now, the next point you want to care about is 75. If you can get your poise up to 75, you'll be able to endure one attack from all standard two-handed light hits and also standard power stance hits. Now, once you get past 75, there is only one more threshold that matters, and that is at poise level 101. And as far as I'm aware, you can only physically do this if you go and grab yourself the bull goat talisman. So as you've seen in this footage here, I have been using the Crucible Knight set with the exception of the legs, which are the Omen set, along with the Bulgo Talisman, giving me a total of 101 poise. This will allow you to endure all standard PvE enemy attacks, including the likes of the Flaming Strike skill. This makes you an absolute powerhouse and you can tank through most hits. Do be aware though that some attacks physically will stun you no matter what, even if you should have the poise to withstand them. So quick recap. 53, 75, 101. Aim for them poise thresholds depending on your build. That's all that matters. Now let's finally get onto the juicy bit and have a look at attribute points. Okay, firstly, I won't dwell on this screen for too long, but a few things in case you didn't know. When you get really late game and you have loads of points left to spare, 60 is the hard cap for both Vigor and Mind. Every point after 60 will start to drop off significantly. However, getting Vigor to 50 is much more recommended because 50 is the soft cap. And realistically, you don't need mind over like 30 or 35, maybe. Having 60 mind is just ridiculous. No one needs that much FP. Endurance is the most flexible stat because you just want to level that up to suit your build. Make sure you can wield your armor set and wield your weapon without going into a heavy load. And then all of the other stats pump as many or as few stat points into them as your build requires. So, for example, if you are just two-handing a really big strength weapon, get your strength up to 66, because when you two-hand it, you will add a virtual 50% on top, bringing you to the maximum requirement of 99. There are a few other nuances with what stats increase what, and we shall look at that right now. This is the bit I have been waiting very impatiently to share with you. Let's talk about the obvious ones first. Vigor obviously increases your health, but if you didn't know, it also increases your fire resistance and immunity. Now, all stats will increase all of your resistances to an extent, but some of them are better than others. So Vigor with fire and immunity. Mind along with your FP also increases your focus resistance. Endurance along with affecting your stamina and equip load will also increase your robustness resistance and arcane will increase your vitality resistance. 
Now, as for the other damaging stats, strength, intelligence, and faith pretty much all just boost the attack power of relevant weapons and spells. Strength boosting the attack power of strength scaling weapons, and intelligence and faith doing the same for their respective weapons and spells. The one thing that a lot of people probably didn't realise, and as I said way back at the start of the video, the one stat that gets shat on all the time is dexterity. There's this stigma that if you are just a heavy dex user, that you're just a brain dead player and that you're just going for the easiest stat? Question mark? Like, I don't even know. I personally don't view it as an easy build. I honestly think arcane bleed builds are the easiest. But anyway, dex has that stigma and I'm here to disprove that and show you why dex is a really, really good stat. Not only does it boost the attack power of dexterity scaling armaments, as it says, it does three other very awesome things. It reduces the casting time of spells, it makes you take less fall damage, and it makes it harder for you to be knocked off of torrent. No other stat has the versatility and diversity of dexterity. Look at all the things this does, this is amazing! Now admittedly the full damage and the being knocked off of torrent are kind of insignificant. You really need to get dexterity into the 80s or 90s before you will notice a really big difference, but there's still things that no other stat can do. The most important thing is reducing the cast time of your spells. Now this is a very specific number and you want to get your dexterity to 70 to fully utilize and maximize this. And for this reason, a dex int or a dex faith build are really solid options because dexterity synergizes with magic builds significantly well. Now you're probably saying 70 dex, that is such a high requirement for a hybrid build. This is where Radagon's Icon comes into place. Radagon's Icon will give you 30 virtual dexterity, but will only give you the casting time of spells bonus. So it won't help the attack power of dexterity scaling weapons, but if you have 40 dexterity and the Radagon's Icon equipped, you then have 70 dexterity and are now casting spells way faster than normal. And as you will see here in these next side-by-side -side clips, the first group of enemies, it may be hard to tell just how improved one is to the other. And bearing in mind, in one clip my dex is 35, in the other it is 70. This would be an even more dramatic difference if my dex was only at, say, 10. But when I move on to the second fight and I attack the guy on horseback, this is where you can really see the advantage of the reduced casting time. I am easily able to cast a spell and roll out of the way of his attacks with the high speed spell casts, whereas I am really struggling to stay agile because of how long it's taking me to recover from each spell cast with low dexterity. This is such an overlooked feature of this stat, and I really hope it will help people to give dex spellcaster hybrid builds a much fairer chance and try it out for yourself. I believe there are a few exceptions to this, namely the dragon incantations, so dex int is going to be far better than dex faith, but nonetheless it's a significant difference and very very powerful when you know how to use it. Hopefully you've learned a few things today, such as how to tell the difference between defense and negation, and what the two different resistance numbers mean, and most importantly, just how awesome dexterity is. So, with all this new information at your fingertips, go forth and conquer the lands between Tarnished. May thy meager flame burn bright. And with that, my friends, all that I have left to say is thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.